I am so excited to get to talk to you two today because I think you made this movie for me. So thank you in advance. It seems like it's going to be right up my alley. Um, but Sean, I wanted to ask the first question to you, and that is that in the presentation to the press earlier this week, you mentioned that uh, Avalonia is actually the largest environment that's ever been made by Walt Disney Animation Studio. And that's very impressive considering Zootopia and San Francisco and all of these other huge environments. So can you talk about the process of making that environment for all of us to enjoy? Sure, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you know, really, uh, uh, the Avalonia and then going into the strange world, um, uh, a lot of it, all of our environments start out driven by the story. Uh, so it's all in the need of the story. Uh, we'll get storyboards uh, early on. We'll start taking a look at those um, and, you know, really start working on what do we need to do in service of, of, of that particular scene and story that you're trying to tell, you know, at that point. Um, and then it's really us working uh, on the environment side with Merdad and the art team uh, to really start defining the rules of the world. We start from nothing. We, we, mm -hmm. have, we have nothing. We're building everything from scratch. Um, and for, particularly for a movie like The Strange World, um, uh, we're building a, creating this new one where anything could be anything. So... Uh, that process for us is really about trying to then define what are the things that 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 drive this world, uh, what is this evolution, uh, so that we can add that kind of richness and sense of history to to the world itself. Um, Strange World is a very organic one, so it's about then figuring out how that kind of those growth cycles go. You know, I think her dad and his team came up with this, this really cool idea right from the, the get-go of uh, there are the trees in this world that as they grow, they fuse together and they ultimately become the platforms mm -hmm. that other trees grow from. Uh, and it creates this space where there really is no ground. It's just platforms out in space with other trees and other platforms growing you know, out from them. Um, so... We think so, then, so much of trees, like uh, standing on those trees as we go up, like our family tree and whatnot. So it's a really cool uh, way to to do the new life cycle for this strange really world, kind of right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that's really great. And now, Murdad, your uh, work has been seen all over the Walt Disney Animation Studio throughout the last decade. But I'm wondering if there's some difference, and maybe Sean just mentioned some of it, but if there's a bit of more freeing property to uh, going otherworldly and, and kind of leaving Earth for a while. I mean, you were just on Earth with Encanto and Raya. So is this a little bit of a more freeing experience for you? Uh, yes. Uh, the, in terms of um, exploring something new, uh, yeah, definitely that. And uh, in terms of uh, how different is that, uh, like uh, in uh, Encanto, uh, I was, we were going through uh, city by city in Colombia, mm -hmm. um, Barichara, like uh, even the mountains, like how high this mountain is, is this a species of plant going there. And we had something to refer to, like a tree trunk looked like this, this species leaves look like that. Um, or, or, the, or the building uh, tiles. Uh, on the strange world, it's everything is different and new. And um, so the challenge with that is it has to be believable and it has to be um, just right amount of beauty and ex awesomeness to it. <laughs> so you are not distracted for this story because if you go to a land that is super different than anything you have seen in your life. You wouldn't even talk to your friend next to you. You're just amazed for the environment. So we have to pull it back. Uh, we have these plants and everything in the background in some of the shots that they are burping, different colors. And now you're thinking, oh, this is too interesting. Now we have to put them in shadow and have the camera more towards the character. And every shot, we just redo every replace everything with the position of the character now the challenging was oh how to how to control all of these uh -huh. it was a, yeah lots of back and forth between the departments 
That's so, that's so wonderful. And Sean, I mean, kind of the same question to you, you bring this like amazing environment and color palette to Frozen too, but of course you have some frame of reference for that. So in Strange World, was it uh, almost more of a, a freeing experience? Did you enjoy that kind of artistry of being able to, to create something almost whole cloth here? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and um, I think it's one of the exciting things that, uh, that Disney does in general is that our, our process is really collaborative. Um, so, and, and it's, it's iterative. We'll, you know, we'll start out on the environment side for building it, um, you know, with general ideas, general rules for, for the world. Um, but there's a lot of blanks to fill in as you're building up the world, as you're going from the smallest pieces of moss down on the ground, all the way to these largest, you know, platforms. Um, so, you know, then what we would do is, you know, the artists would get this opportunity to kind of fill in like all of these stories, full reference from, hey, I saw this image of this sea creature or this coral, and I think it'd be really cool to put into, you know, to this or, you know, start looking at, you know, microscopic uh, photography or food. Um, uh, to really kind of pull a lot of their inspiration and, and, and get that in. And then we would iterate on it. It was like they, they would put an idea in, somebody would see that, somebody would riff off of that idea and add something to their work that, that gave it a, a particular richness. And then, um, you know, so slowly you just, you see this, the world kind of evolve and form into kind of a cohesive world that, that you want to spend time in, you know, that is, that's intriguing and exciting. Absolutely. And now, Murdad, I saw that uh, doing some research that you have also lived in the world of video games as well before uh, coming over to Disney. And I'm wondering, because this does almost have like a comic book splash page uh, video game kind of quality when you're looking at those vibrant, bright colors that are coming at. Uh, would you agree with that? It, did that influence at all sort of what your work was coming into Strange World? Uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, it's thank you for this question. So first time I get it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 my background, I, I start in video games and what uh, I, I think my process is still like that. So I, I imagine hold the set and hold the location together. And then and the anime, uh, CG animation, we do that. We, be whole, we build, hold the set, all the plants, set dress it. And then layout team put the which are, which is our cinematographer put the camera, so um, and then we adjust it to the camera. So it's a hybrid of old school animation and video game. Uh, okay. Also for the for the colorfulness, uh, also it was it was more more of a, uh, I, I like the movies that you can talk about it like. 20 years after with your friend mm -hmm. like do you remember that orange sequence that everything was orange and yellows i like that character so i wanted to have that so i was kind of pushing avalonia to yellow orange uh reds lots of hustle and bustle and then form quiet curvy lines horizontal and then when you go a strange world, it's like, boom, everything is round, is uh, uh, bold. And uh, to control even that, because it's now it would break your eyes if it's, if it's too long. So we color coordinate the sequence. That's that's all great. And now I have a couple more questions for each of you. Um, really briefly, Sean, uh, I'm wondering if there's something inside of the environment that you sort of snuck in there or really proud of in the environment. So when we're watching it, I can watch it on the screen and be like, oh, there it is. This is what he mentioned to me was in that environment that he loved that he was able to get into this movie. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I think probably the, 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 the environment that I'm kind of the most proud of uh, uh, would be, you know, we have this sequence in Strange World where the characters are having to run across and, you know, kind of getting chased um, through the world itself. Uh, and we have this concept of these kind of streams of characters that are flying through the space. Um, and they end up having to use one of those to be able to run across it, um, uh, which 
then for me was watching all of these different departments all kind of work together mm -hmm. to be able to achieve that. Um, uh, it's something that we, we, you know, we, we never really have done before where you kind of have crowds, uh, crowds of characters and hero characters all kind of running uh, on top of them. Um, you know, and is probably some of the, are probably some of the largest vistas that we see of Strange World itself, um, uh, all happening kind of at the same time, you know, and for me, uh, the thing I love about environments is that I love building these, these areas that you would want to go back to, you know, so like when I look at those vistas, I, I look at like, oh, I just want to see what's over that hill, you know, like, yeah. or like, I'd love to see what's behind that tree there. Um, so, and hopefully other people will, will feel the same way when they, when they watch it, that, that it's a, it's a, it's a world that they want to spend more time in. That's so great. And mentioning those vistas, I know it was mentioned that Don's, um, his uh, Iowa roots played into this as well. And as a as a kid that grew up right next door to Iowa, uh, certainly that spoke to me too. Merdad, same kind of question for you. Anything that you put into this movie that you're, maybe it's the trees growing on top of the trees, as Sean mentioned, but is there something that you're like, this is, this is me, this is uh, something I got to put into this movie? Uh, something is, that is related to my background and my childhood. I, I grew up in the um, south of Iran, and there's lots of desert and sandstorm. And uh, when there is a sandstorm, the weather gets, everything gets orange. And, uh, and you don't see the, where the light is coming from, but there, it's lit. Mm -hmm. And that orange color have the effect on every saturation of other colors around you. Uh, it's 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 amazing to be in that and see it oh wow you and the the space that you can see in the front is like i don't know 20 meters or something um so i we have a we, we have some some of that that, that um, atmosphere that mm -hmm. i was able to yeah i put it in the show that's so great. And this is my last question. So before I ask it, I just want to say thank you both so much for your art and creativity that you put into the world, because really, it just means so much to so many different people out there. So thank you. Um, but with that, I want to have a little bit of fun. I'm asking everybody the same question at the end. And that is, what is your favorite adventure story? That could be something like a book, it could be a movie, it could be whatever, but this is an adventure tale, right? So uh, Meridad, you want to go first? What is your favorite adventure story? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I know that uh, it's Jules Verne, uh, 10,000 meters on the, on yeah. the sea. I don't remember the English name. Uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Yes. Yes. That's so great. Absolutely. And especially the Nautilus. I'm a big Disney Parks guy. I love that the Nautilus yeah. used to be there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean, how about you? Is there an adventure tale that you love? You know, I mean, I grew I grew up, you know, reading Jules Verne and, and Edgar Rice Burroughs and all the rest of that. But but I would actually say probably the most formative one was, you know, going to the movie theater and watching Raiders of the Lost Ark, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, and, and and that movie. And, you know, and that, that was like right at that point where then as a kid, you're playing all of that. Like you're, you know, you're out in the front yard and you're, you know, running and visiting a big boulder chasing you. And uh, so, so that one, I, you know, I think was probably the most formative to, uh, to my, honestly, to even getting into movies uh, yeah. was, uh, oh, wow, I guess you could have a career in this. That's so wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for your time. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Absolutely. Oh, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You.